Even though house prices are still rising in most parts of the country, we're starting to reach the limit of what's affordable. The gap between prices and a typical person's capacity to pay has never been this bad, according to AMP. Now that's assuming that person has a 20% deposit, an average full-time wage, and is spending 28% of their income on home loan repayments. Unfortunately, we'll be stuck with this affordability crisis for a long time, especially given our population grew by more than 600,000 people in the past year, much higher than the number of homes approved for construction. Any government that's serious about improving affordability could restrict negative gearing and capital gains tax discounts, but it would be facing political suicide. Meanwhile, the share market fell slightly today, driven by losses from mining and retail stocks. But over the week, it's risen by a solid 0.6 of a percent. Overseas, US and UK share markets rose, while it was quite gloomy in Asia. While the Australian dollar is hovering above 66 US cents, oil prices fell, even after the OPEC plus cartel, which includes Saudi Arabia, Russia and Iran, agreed on voluntary cuts to their oil production by around 2.2 million barrels a day. That's because markets are betting some of those OPEC nations might cheat and not actually live up to their end of the bargain. And finally, love is in the air. 127,000 couples got married last year, which is a record high. But 49,000 couples got divorced. So buyer beware. And that's finance.